Where is the leaking coming from? So we have a leak. This is the first time we are actually dropping the underbelly ourselves. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of excited just to see what it looks like. Aren't you guys? Like, aren't you curious to like what the tanks and everything looks like underneath there? Ooh, it's gonna be so mysterious. We're gonna do it, we're going for it. We've been avoiding dropping this underbelly for so long. Even when we in frozen pipes, we're like, nope, not gonna happen. But today, we're gonna see what it looks like. <laughs> Ooh, I got that on camera. <laughs> okay, the underbelly is almost down. There's hidden secrets under there and I just gotta know what's up. Let's do that one. Let's fill up the tanks here. I wanna see. We wanna see what it looks like. Fill in tanks with the Hanks and fix in tanks with the Hanks. Wow. Look at all those mysteries under there. <gasps> wow. Got a puddle. We found a puddle. That's a good sign. It's a good sign, but a bad sign. Did you guys get that? Yeah, it sucks. RV life, am I right? Are we any closer to figuring this out? No! I got to see the underbelly, so I'm kind of good. I'm complete. I might go take a nap. I'll just take care of this. Okay. <laughs> our goals and our intentions are to fill up the tank and see if we can create and generate that leak again so we can figure out where we need to be working on. But I foresee, mark Carl's words, I foresee us having to switch out all this insulation because it's all saturated with water and heck, maybe it will help us in the long run because it's been a little chilly on the floors. The insulation is wet. Wet. How do you spell that? H-W-H-E-T. You could just stop right there. By the way, this is my best friend my whole life, Steven. So give a hashtag Steven in the comments below. So what I was actually thinking is I don't want to take over for like overstep my boundaries with you as a plumber. But what I was thinking is, um, why, why don't you take it from here? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> perfect. No, we're good. Instead of taking off the front where it looks like it's kind of tucked underneath underneath the trim piece and kind of glued in, I think that's gonna be a pain to try to get back up in if that's the case. So back here, we have another band. We can pop that out and just lay the underbelly down. Yeah. I think we could take, slide all the insulation out and then have a nice workspace in there. And then we won't have to mess with the front. That's exactly what I was thinking. Wait, why not? I think if you just took these screws off, it might come down. You think so? I think it might. You think that? I think this piece is holding it in. It's only a couple Phillips screws. We could try to take it off and see what's up. We didn't even get started yet, and we're already changing our minds. So we just sat there and figured out that it might be easier to get the front off. It's smart, though, to, to work slowly. Because if you work too fast and don't make it through, then I don't know. Who invited her? Welcome oh. to the Hank Stanigans. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it's coming down. Oh, it's gonna leak on me. It's working though. You look so concerned. Look at that face. Oh no. Oh, it's leaking out the back here too. Wow. Hot diggity. Actually, it just... <laughs> Perfect, hon. What'd you do? That sucks, cause that just... Well, you know, we'll just have to address one thing at a time. Okay, okay, talk about dropping. It dropped. Get yourself a partner that takes everything literally and uh, just makes all your dreams come true. Who's gonna clean this up? I've already broken something. Should I handle tools? Of course I should. Oh no. Way to go, Nene. Oh, that probably helps circulate air. Yeah, okay. Well, let's let the professionals in the comments figure this one out. If you guys know what this tube is for, throw it in the comments below, because by the time this comes out, we'll still probably not have it figured out. It drop it on my head. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, super cool. Super cool. Yeah, there's some water buildup down here. I'd say we made a good decision on dropping this underbelly. <laughs> Picking up uh, Nene slack here. Look what you did. We can um, have our own reservoir. Reservoir? Oh man, yeah, it's so cute. Oh, dang. It's just gonna pull apart this insulation. It's toast. <gasps> Look at it. <laughs> toast my loast. And we keep trying to tell you guys to come out here and have some fun with us. This is great time. RV life. Wow, what is this stuff? Oh no, why is that colorful? Rust? Maybe. Lick it. Hey, you lick it. Honey, you missed one. Hey, me again. How, how's everyone doing? Look at that. I think we're good now, babe. Let's just put it back and call it good. All right. Crisis averted. Oh my goodness. She's, she's wet. Here we go. Oh. 
That inflation has seen better days. So now it is time to dry up as much as we can with some old towels. And uh, while that's happening, I have some water filling up the gray tanks so we can finally like simulate where the leak is coming from. So as I'm messing with the shower and like trying to fill up the gray tank, I am noticing that the connection from the shower head, the flexible shower head to like where the handles are, there is like a really slow leak happening out of there. But we're still confused to why the leak stops whenever we like empty our gray tanks. Everything's completely drenched. We see some water marking on the tanks themselves, but Steven noticed that they were coming from above the tanks. There's a concern that it's maybe leaking from the top and dripping down the side. So right now we're having to access the back panels here uh, that go through the underpass. I'm taking all those off so we can assess. And upon taking one off already, I'm already seeing some water build up there. So hang on, this is going to be quite the journey. So I actually think it's a good sign that the leak is coming from higher up and making its way down because what I'm thinking is it might just be a loose connection with the pipes. I was kind of worried that there was an actual hole in one of the holding tanks, maybe like not on the bottom but above so when it got full it just like overflowed. You always want the easy solution guys so I'm really hoping it's just a loose connection. Let's hope for the best here, okay? Oh wow, holy. Ooh, we got water. But is this the same, would this be enough of a leak to fill the underbelly? I still think it's that shower hand, that shower connection, because that's been leaking and I just never thought it would create an issue. I just thought it would leak into the shower, like you said, but yeah. it's probably following down and then connecting with these pipes, because this is the water source, it would make sense. There's a lot of theories on the table. Time will tell. So something big that you want to look out for when looking for a leak and everything is uh, discoloration from the water. The minerals in the water, once it dries, it will cause discoloration. Since we're working from the bottom up, we figured we keep looking up, 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 and we're taking it up more. And we actually kind of consolidated what we think the source of the leak is behind the shower here. So I took off this back panel here. We noticed some leaking. You kind of see some of that. You can see the buildup. You see the buildup and almost like the mineral deposits from there. So what I'm thinking is water, if you want to come right around this side here. I'm thinking water might be going around here and maybe this isn't sealed too well to the fiberglass shower. Uh -oh. And kind of see if that's the case. Because again, if you look back over here, these connections, right? Oh, it's dark it. in here. So this connection right here, yeah. I don't see any water stains underneath it right now mainly just right here which is where the nut is so we're going to kind of hold off on these okay and kind of explore this option first and then we'll kind of go from that the hot is leaking at the actual the nut. nut connecting to the fiberglass so this is after the tanks filled up huh yeah this is like with the tanks pretty full so what we found is probably multiple slow leaks behind the shower, but our main concern here, a really steady leak coming from the tank, but nonetheless, it doesn't really minimize the other leaking. We still have to address all that as well. So it's like down the rabbit hole we go, ready or not, Alice in Wonderland. It's uh, now Carl Nene Wonderland here. So <sighs> it's a journey. These are the holding tanks and this is the, obviously the concern for the leak, right? Am I right? Check this out. So there was a bracket here here on a swivel we loosened it it was flush up against this gray tank here it looks like there is a little perf there and when i set my finger on it notice that it disrupts the leaking when i let it go a lot more water starts coming out a little perfy do so we're gonna seal that up exciting exciting stuff when you find the source of the leak I'm gonna sit down and look through the manual here and do some research because maybe the Grand Design manual says how to like patch tanks. I'm out of breath because uh, I don't know why. Because I don't exercise and I should. We patched the hole with some JB Weld epoxy material. The boys are off to Home Depot to get some supplies. <laughs> While they were gone, I went, I just crawled under there with a the towel and just dried out the entire underbelly. And I think it's like ready to go. And I swept it with a little broom. So it's like the cleanest section of an underbelly you will ever see. I'm gonna take you on a tour of what is under the underbelly, like some more stuff. So come on. We got our gray tank. 
we got our black tank. This is cool that it's got reinforced bars that goes across here to keep them stable and intact because I've heard of some people's RVs, the tank like falls out of them completely. A lot of your problems are gonna come from water related issues, whether it's a tank, a holding tank or your water tank or your pipes. Now, as we get closer, I don't know if you guys remember, but we talked about our, the tank heaters. Here's what they actually look like. It's literally like a pad that just slaps on here. And here's the wiring uh, to the 12 volt battery. If you're not sure where the leaks are coming from, literally start turning stuff off, start emptying things, and really take notice when the leak happened. Were your gray tanks open? Were they closed? Were they really full? Were they really empty? Is there water in your fresh tank? Nobody's gonna care about your RV more than you. Coming under a little bit more here, you'll see the actual valve mechanism and all that for the black tank. The actual valve pulls and it releases. So here is the legit connection to where it pulls and empties your black tank. It all comes out the same pipe. So that is why it is always good to dump your gray tanks after. That is peeling off, I'm not sure. That must be our kitchen tank, see here? So that feeds all the way from the kitchen out to here so that all the tanks are fairly close together and then the fresh water tank is probably really far back there wow there's a lot of just random pieces on here and here's that dump valve piece here as you can see this is the one for the kitchen so how cool is that like what the dump valve looks like take the time to look at as much stuff as you can in the underbelly and just make sure everything looks hunky-dory pretty cool stuff <laughs> Just got back from Home Depot and man, we are running out of daylight. We're trying to get this underbelly put back together because it's going to be like 30 degrees tonight. We're kind of stressed in here. <sighs> Calm down, Carl. We're going to get this done, I think. Dude, the RV looks like a, a mess. Like, what is going on? I am surprised nobody else in the RV park is like, are you kidding me right now? What are these people doing? Oh yeah, hopefully it's not up top. The test run of the gray tank failed. And I'm glad we did a test run. Yeah. Right there I think is where it is, right here. Yeah, kinda, yeah. I think that's where, yeah, right there. See that? Yeah. Let me see if I can clean this up a little bit. Yeah, it's just coming right off. I'm gonna pull the gray tank so it doesn't get all this all wet again. Yeah. We ran out of daylight. I kind of figured that was coming. When we went to retest to make sure that the perforation was actually filled, it leaked again. It's all the way around the entire tank. I think it's been rubbing up against that strut, that metal strut there, and it's created a perforation around the entire tank. So we're gonna have to drop the tank tomorrow. <sighs> See, this is what I was telling you guys before. One of you is always supporting the other because I'm not having a positive outlook on this. You're this not. Is, I'm kind of torqued off right now because this is just ridiculous. But that's because I noticed like when you One do, thing after when another. you do a project, you want to like start and finish. Never enter a project and say this is gonna be easy. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll get it addressed tomorrow. We got this. We have to go get some more supplies. To the depot. <laughs> to the Home Depot. We live there, right? Yeah. Not a fun place to live. Day two of fixing the gray tank leak under our RV. If you are watching this right now, please do not use us as a how to repair your RV video. We're just showing you like our whole experience with this. Using some sandpaper to really grit it down, get a nice even surface there. And then you wanna use like an acetone or like 100% alcohol, rubbing alcohol to really clean it of all the grease and dirt and oils that are located on top of the actual perforation. After sanding it down, looks like there's already a patch there. I don't know if this cross beam right here is rubbing it raw there from it sitting and traveling like that it might just be a sharp enough corner there that it's wearing through there we have abs plastic we think so this is the stuff we have that we're going to try this time yesterday we used epoxy that we had laying around and it was like steel epoxy has this ever happened to you guys before on your rv have you guys ever noticed any leaking coming out of places it shouldn't be that just reminds me of the cream cheese that comes with uh cinnamon rolls cinnamon rolls Ooh, I'm wondering how long we let it sit for. So now we wait. It's gonna take a couple hours to cure. So it's cold weather out, so that is not in our favor, but we gotta let the glue dry. Look how messy it is. This is what happens when you have sleepovers. What are your guts telling you? Do you guys think this is gonna work the first time or no? Fine. Positive attitude. Great. 
Loser. <laughs> what do you got, babe? <laughs> what do you think, honey bunny? I think it's gonna be good. I think it's gonna do well as well. Time will tell. Two hours and counting. Here we go. I think we gave it enough time to dry. I started filling up all the gray tanks. It looks like they're about full, so the moment of truth here now. Look at that, gray is full. I don't really recommend filling all your tanks up all the way all the time, but we have to test it out to make sure there's no leaking before we put all this insulation back. I ain't gonna chance it. Well, I'm out of ideas, I don't know. Well, we're just gonna have to keep our tanks as empty as we can for now. Mm -hmm. Like we can keep them open here. Yeah. But when we hit the road, we're gonna have to really not use the tanks. Yeah, we'll have to stay at RV parks or something, somewhere we can dump, you know. Or like hit up free dump stations along the way. Like oh, well, overnight it'd be fine, but if we yeah. have to shower, we'd have to go to like a campground or something. We put so much of that plastic ABS epoxy on the tank and we waited like two or three hours. I think we're gonna need a new tank. So that's gonna be something to be concerned about. Um, they did put more of that epoxy stuff on it. We are just gonna let it go though. We're not gonna do any test runs with it because we may have not let it dry enough and then all of a sudden we put all that pressure. Probably smart to let it sit for at least 24 hours, maybe a couple days. So maybe it's fine now and it'll be fine for a while, but I don't know. Having leaks is just not, not a good thing. I can't feel my toes right now. 